It's estimated that over 13% of the world's population suffer from some version of neuropathy. Maybe you're one of them. Maybe you run a practice treating patients who are diagnosed with neuropathy. Maybe you have a loved one with neuropathy. You're wondering, does hyperbaric oxygen actually relieve the symptoms or even cure something like neuropathy? That's what we're gonna cover in today's video. So hyperbaric and neuropathy is actually a very personal story for me. It's literally how I got into hyperbarics in the first place. So I'm gonna share that story with you now. If you really don't care about that story, you can go ahead and just skip my story and then catch us where we're actually talking about why hyperbaric may or may not help with neuropathy. A little over 17 years ago, I was doing some construction on my house and I herniated a disc in my lower back. And at the time, that's what I did for a living. I was literally helping people with nerve injuries, with disc herniations, with back pain. And for 18 months, I did everything I knew to do. And while the specific and acute pain in my back went away, I was left with drop foot in my right foot and after 18 months of doing everything that I knew to do, which in my opinion was a lot, I still couldn't get that drop foot to heal. And at this point in my life, I was in my mid twenties, I was in practice. This disc herniation, which led to drop foot, which is one type of neuropathy, was so persistent that I figured this is just the way that it's gonna be. At a similar time, about a year and a half after the initial injury, I found myself at a conference and in that conference was a vendor hall. And in that vendor hall had all the new tools and modalities and, and equipment that you know, people were using and buying and putting in their practice to help their patients. And I stumbled upon a hyperbaric chamber, had no idea what it was, had no idea what it would be used for. It just looked interesting to me. And they were doing intro sessions. So I did a short session inside the chamber. I thought it was a pleasant experience. And I did my 30 minute session, got in the chamber, got out of the chamber, and then continued walking around the vendor hall. And it was about 10 minutes after that first session that I started to feel pins and needles in my right foot. And that was the first time I felt my foot in a year and a half. And I said, wait, am I feeling this in my foot from that hyperbaric chamber that I was just in? So I went back to the salesman. He explained that, yes, they use hyperbaric for nerve injuries. And I was intrigued as this was the first thing that even moved the needle for me in 18 months. And he agreed to do another handful of 30-minute sessions over the next four days of the conference. Long story short, I left that conference with about 15 or 20% recovery in something that didn't change at all in 18 months after four days of treatment. So needless to say, I got myself a chamber and I treated myself at home and I had no intention at the time of ever using it or bringing it into my practice. I just wanted my foot back. So at this time, I've had a full recovery of that drop foot. I no longer have any evidence or signs or symptoms of that neuropathy. And it's 17 years later, we've built an entire practice around hyperbaric and I've helped so many people. Now, neuropathy is not one of the on-label FDA-approved indications for hyperbaric. And quite honestly, even in the off-label world, it's not someone's first go-to modality for this type of injury or these types of issues. But because it was my introduction into hyperbaric, we've treated an enormous amount of patients with a variety of different neuropathies, and we've had great success doing so. So the short answer is yes, hyperbaric's amazing for neuropathy, but why? Before I get into exactly what some of those mechanisms are, I was the first patient in my office with regard to hyperbaric. It was for neuropathy. My second patient was my stepfather who was diagnosed with MS. And I'm not gonna go into the details of that, but in my mind at the time, I thought, hey, here's the therapy that I used for a nerve injury that I had. It was a disc injury and it ended with neuropathy as a result. And it helped me tremendously. In fact, I had full recovery. Well, here was my stepdad with MS. It's a completely different disease. It's a completely different mechanism. The only thing in common, in fact, is that I had neuropathic symptoms. He's got neuropathic symptoms. And I thought, I don't think it would hurt him. Maybe it would help. And so he was the second patient in my office. And we did a very aggressive protocol for him. And he also had tremendous results through his hyperbaric care. And that was the moment that I realized that hyperbaric was doing something for the nervous system that clearly nobody was talking about doing research on and certainly not exposing many patients to. And that's really how we started to develop our hyperbaric program around neuropathy and neuropathic disease. So exactly how did hyperbaric help a disc injury that led to a nerve damage and an autoimmune disease that also ends with nerve damage? We'll get right back to that video, but real quick, if you're a practitioner or you're looking to get into hyperbarics, and you're wanting to learn more and making sure that you're offering this therapy as effectively and as safely as possible, I want you to know that we offer a series of courses, some of which are online and some of which are in person. At thehbotcourse.com, we'll include a link below. We have several courses available from training and certification in hyperbaric medicine, safety director, 
as well as a few different business implementation options to get the business up and running. So if you think that training and education would be helpful for you, take a look at the hbotcourse.com. Again, the link will be in the description below. Now back to our video. Well, the mechanisms are very similar. In my case, it was a clear injury, which led to disc herniation. That disc herniation literally takes up space and puts pressure on the nerve and of the small blood vessels that nourish those nerves. And as a result, this will lead to nerve damage following whatever nerve is affected. Remember that my initial exposure to hyperbaric was 18 months after my injury. So at that point, the inflammation had calmed down. I had pretty decent mobility and movement in my lower back. Of the muscles that were still working well, I was exercising. So a lot of that initial disruption had cleared up, but the nerve never really regenerated. Our nervous system is very metabolically active, and it could take very small amounts of hypoxia to create dramatic changes in function. And in fact, the nervous system will often protect itself in hypoxic moments to lower function to make sure that those nerves aren't just running without being fueled appropriately. And so it becomes almost dormant. So what did hyperbaric do for me? Well, in an area of inflammation and damage and hypoxia, in the short term, it provided a boost of oxygen. And in that boost of oxygen, I immediately started to feel some changes in that nerve. But then as I kept going, I created hyperoxygenation in the area, which then led to new blood vessel growth, angiogenesis, another mechanism of hyperbaric. And so with that angiogenesis, I started to grow new blood vessels to nourish that nerve where the injury occurred, where that capillary damage happened in the first place. And then after continued use, another mechanism of action, neurogenesis, literally rebuilding, healing, and then bringing in stem cells nervous system stem cells for repair and regeneration of tissue. And so just utilizing that tool, I was able to boost the oxygen levels, regrow the capillaries so that it can now oxygenate itself, and now bring in all the growth factors and stem cells required for actual cellular and tissue repair and regeneration. What about for my stepfather? Well, in his case, it's an autoimmune disease. Hyperbaric reduces the cytokine response. It literally reduces inflammation locally in the area. It also reduces a thing called lipid peroxidation or oxidation of lipids. Where do we find lipids? Cell membranes, mitochondrial membranes, nuclear membranes, but also the myelin that surrounds our nervous system. And so in his case, we were able to bring the inflammation down. We were able to slow the oxidation of the myelin sheath. And then again, stimulate neurogenesis, improved synapse connections, all the neuroplasticity and central nerve-related healing that comes from repetitive use of hyperbaric over time. And in the literature, these are very well-documented mechanisms. Is hyperbaric the cure for neuropathy or is hyperbaric the cure for MS? Of course not. But does putting someone with neuropathy into a hyperbaric chamber seem to relieve the symptoms and promote healing and regeneration? Absolutely. What about other types of neuropathy, like diabetic neuropathy? Well, similar, we have a glucose issue that over years and years of out-of-control blood sugar, those capillary beds get destroyed. And as those capillary beds get destroyed, we can no longer oxygenate those tissues as well as we could before that damage. And so in the short term, we create hyperoxygenation, bring oxygen to those damaged nerves. And not immediately, but over the course of only a few weeks, we'll typically see some feeling return and some function return. But if we continue to support that person, similar to my injury, we'll start to get new blood vessel growth and new capillary growth and healing of the capillary beds and the endothelial lining, the inside lining of our blood vessels. This could be tremendous for lower leg neuropathy or even retinopathies that are associated with diabetes. And then once we get the new blood vessel growth and the new capillary growth and we're oxygenating that tissue normally, over the long haul, we'll get neurogenesis, we'll get improved synapse connections, we'll get all that neuroplastic change that I'm talking about, as well as the growth factors and the stem cells migrating into areas for healing, repair, and regeneration of tissue. So as I said earlier, is hyperbaric the cure for these issues? No, but should it certainly be considered as part of the healing and recovery for somebody suffering from neuropathy? In my opinion, absolutely yes. And the next logical question would be, well, what would the protocol for something like this be? And 
as per usual with most of the protocols that we talk about, it's going to vary dramatically. How severe is the injury? How severe is the neuropathy? How long have they been suffering? What disease is causing it? Is that disease under control? There's so many variables that are ultimately going to affect what the actual protocol for somebody like this would be. But just to give you some guidelines, in general, for most neuropathic issues, we stay on the lower side of pressures, somewhere between 1.3 to 1.7. Often in our office, these cases are treated at 1.5 atmospheres on 100% oxygen. The short-term effect of hyperoxygenation is literally going to happen within the first few minutes of each session. And that's something that every patient is going to receive on every session. Some people will respond very quickly to that, like I did, and some people will not. It takes time for these to heal. However, the hyperoxygenation effect would be very quick. In terms of the angiogenic effect, the growth factors, the stem cells, the neuroplasticity, this takes time. So most of these patients in our office would be treated at 1.5 atmospheres, four to six hours a week for at least eight to 10 weeks. Most patients will experience the full realm of what hyperbaric is going to offer them. Does everybody get a full recovery? No. Do the overwhelming majority of patients who go through this process see some pretty impressive results? Yes, absolutely. And in my opinion, protocols like this are just a starting point. Again, here's the box that describes roughly what a patient might need to experience. And then we need to add or subtract based on other criteria, as I was describing earlier, like the chronicity, the severity, comorbidities that they're experiencing. And so we have to be able to have a protocol and then modify it accordingly based on patient's need. And while this is not an exact science, it is something that we teach in our courses consistently. And it's in the book that we just finished writing on the art and science of hyperbaric medicine. If you're interested in a book on protocols and mechanisms of action to really understand the full scope of what hyperbaric has to offer, click on the link in the description below and make sure you get yourself a copy of that book. Thanks as always for your attention and we'll see you on the next video.